So good morning, everyone. Um, hopefully you're all still with us and you're, you're enjoying everything so far. So I've only got a short slot, 15 minutes. I'm going to keep to time and then we've got a little break scheduled. So you can, uh, as I said earlier, you can go off and, and grab that drink, grab that little break of time and have a comfort break. Um, so we'll get straight into it. Um, the first thing I want to talk to you today is about our NPS rating. So obviously a lot of customers do NPS. You know, it is the way we look at our services, the way we understand what do you think of us, how are we performing? Um, and I want to talk a little bit about NPS and Net Promoter Score for those that aren't aware of it. It's used in the majority of industries now. And, and the figures that I put on the left there are for business to business. So in essence, what we're doing, you know, we don't sell to the consumer. Um, those are the business to business scores that, that you see. So, you know, architecture sits up at the top there around 65 is their average NPS. As you go down the list and you look at business to business software providers, they come in at around 42, something like that. Um, and that's kind of where our market is and, and the competitors that we're looking at. Um, just for in, in information on the right, I did put the best performing NPS companies on the right, Tesla at the top, 96. I, I mean, I don't know if that surprises you, it surprised me. I mean, you hear a lot of bad things about Teslas these days with the three series and this, that and the other, but yeah, they're, they're at the top of the pile. And then, you know, you've got a, a service industry in Starbucks next, but yeah, just some little context there for MPS. Um, MPS ratings are interesting. Um, Nought to six is actually classed as a detractor, a detractor score. So well, she might think, well, a six, okay, well, that's okay. Actually, that's a detractor. So that means we're not delivering the service to the standard that we would expect to deliver it to you. Um, seven and eight is passive. So passive is, yeah, it was all right. That, that's kind of what you mean by that rating. And nine and 10 is a promoter score. So you've got to be right up in that upper echelon to, to actually score well in NPS. So if I take us on, I mean, obviously you can see the number on the right there. I'll come back to the question in a minute. So our score, um, and we've been running this for nearly 18 months now, is around the, is, is 84. And I checked that yesterday, so that's updated as of yesterday. So I'm very, very proud of, of everyone at Tiger and the services team more specifically to, to say that we are rated as a net promoter score of 84. Um, as I've said, that puts us about 40 points above our competitors in the business to business software service industry. Um, and it's an achievement we want to shout about. It does mean that about 87% of our responses are promoter as well, is what that 84 equates to. And I've just got a copy of the question there, and, and I'll say to all of you as customers and, and tell the users of the system that you talk to as well, when you raise a case with us and we close that case, um, you will get a link through, and we use Salesforce, the built-in tool in Salesforce, which we also use as our ITSM tool. Um, we'll say yes, send you an NPS, you get a little link, you click on the link, it's one very simple question and the opportunity to leave some feedback. Um, good or bad, we welcome it and, and if you leave your details because you've got a real concern with something, we will come back to you. Uh, the next thing that I just wanted to show you today is something that we've been working on recently is the self-service web form. So, We've moved away from accepting emails um, to, to actually raise cases with us. And the primary method of raising a case with us now, or an incident, if you will, in an ITIL sense, is to actually use the web form that we've launched. So I've just, I've recorded it as a little demo. So let me just kick that off. So as you can see, it's a very, very straightforward web form. Um, some nice information gathering is what we're doing here. In the past, we used to often receive emails that said PRISM not working, something of that ilk. Um, you know, and we had one example where actually it was one person that couldn't run one report and actually they didn't have access to that report. So what we've done is we've designed this form just to help us gather a little bit more information from you um, and, and really get us towards the point of being able to resolve quicker. So we ask a little bit more information than perhaps you would send in an email, how many people are affected, you know, what's the area of the system, is it everyone affected? It also helps us prioritize the, the, the case basically. Um, you put the opportunity to add attachments there if you need to, but that's it, you fill in the information, you submit, and once it's done, you'll get a little thank you page that says, great, we've got your case. 
Now, what this is also meant is it's actually allowed us to um, do a lot more from an automation point of view. So, as I've said, we capture more information that leads to faster restoration uh, by, by us knowing more information about the file. Um, contacting us is smoother. So when you raise your case, you'll get a, a response from Salesforce that says, here's your case reference. Um, you can just respond to that. That will automatically get added in. The analyst that the case is assigned to gets notified that it's assigned to them so they know there's been an update to the case. Again, all moves along with us knowing, having visibility, being able to resolve things faster for you. Um, you also get more updates. So what we've also turned on in the automation is when we assign the case to the next level, so it comes into our service desk, they triage it, spend a certain amount of time trying to fix it. If they can't resolve it, they pass it to second line. If they can't resolve it, they pass it to third line. It can go onto our technical services, our engineers as they are. It can go onto our development team in case we think it's a bug. For each of these things, you'll get a notification. So it gives you more information about the case, what's going on with it. Um, you can see comments, so we'll add quick comments. So we'll add a comment, tick a box that says send to you. You get an update through that says this is what we're doing. Or if we need more information, we can ask you for more information. It's much quicker, it's much easier, um, helps move the case along. And the other thing is, you know, it's removed human error. We used to do nearly everything via email. So believe it or not, and we had somebody dedicated largely to the mailbox. So you used to get your case reference number back very quickly from us, but that was done manually. Um, things can get lost, things can get missed, copy and paste. You know, what if you put something at the bottom of your email that we didn't see and we've not copied it into the case? And whereas now it's all automated, we've removed, removed that human error. Um, so yeah. It's hopefully you're enjoying the benefits of that as well. Um, and you are seeing more information and more updates about your case. But as with everything, if you've got any suggestions, anything you'd like to see, any way you'd like to see it done differently, either put a, a note in the chat on, on, on the WebEx here, um, or you can drop me an email, drop an email into the team. We absolutely want to hear your feedback. You know, we are looking to improve. So what have we been doing? Um, look, there's a lot of information on this slide. I just wanted to talk about a few things before you, you all doze off and before we go into our break. So um, there's a lot going on at Tiger, there always is. I've been here two and a half years now. I mean, to echo Ben's comment earlier, I, I'm still a newbie. I'm earning my stripes, if, if you were uh, to use that expression. Um, I came into Tiger into you know, a mature organisation, but not necessarily a mature service structure. Um, we've done a lot. We've done the basics. We continue to enhance the services we deliver. And, you know, I mentioned NPS. When I launched that um, last year, after the first month, our NPS was at 31, which, you know, isn't bad. We, we weren't that far away from, from where we were for our competitors. But like I said, we're now at 84. And, and part of that is, yes, we've got um, resource with more skills, more more experience because we, you know, we brought some new people in. Um, but all the other things we're doing lead to it as well. So um, for those that are hosted by us, we've recently upgraded our hosted environment. You won't have seen downtime. We we managed to just move our hosting around, so you won't have seen that. But it's more powerful and efficient servers. It's a smaller footprint. Um, we've more than doubled our capacity as well by doing that exercise. Uh, again, it is about having that latest technology in, more reliable technology, more resilience. You know, we've gone from two power supplies, four power supplies, extra network ports in the servers, you know, just making sure that there's going to be more uptime is what we're looking at as part of that as well. Security is obviously a big one at the moment in the world. You know, we are continuing to enhance our security. We've put a new firewall in. Um, we've added some additional monitoring tools onto that file as, firewall as well. We've moved to a new antivirus protection that gives us more alert and more notifications. Um, uh, ESET, who, who's who we've gone with for that, obviously it's Cisco Firewall. Um, it's allowed us to do more segregation of our environments, of our equipment. Um, and yeah, as I say, that extra alerting is helping us as well. Obviously, we, we monitor that closely. We've got our infrastructure team that keep a close eye on it, and we actually respond to those things. Next challenge that we are currently working on and we'll be focusing on very much so in the next couple of months, and obviously it's a challenge that I feel probably a lot of organisations are currently going through, 
Uh, Windows Server 2012 goes end of life, 10th, uh, 10th of October, certainly October this year anyway. Um, we are working hard to make sure that we remove our last instances of that. We uh, will be moving everything to Server 2022, so going on to the latest version. For those of you that are not hosted by us, because obviously we'll be taking care of it if you're hosted, those of you not hosted by us, we can confirm that Prism 2023 will run on Server 2022. If you're still on an older version of Prism, Prism 2018, I can confirm that that runs on Server 2019 um, and 2016 as well. Obviously, it's any versions before. Um, but look, if you need help, speak to your account manager. If you want, to, if you're going to be migrating the Prism service, you want us to help with that migration. Obviously, we're not going to build the service for you because we're not hosting it for you. But yeah, if you want to run testing, if you want help with the migration, get in touch with your account manager. They'll work up a package for you, and, and we'll be more than happy to provide those that professional services to help you with your migration. Um, and the last thing, ITIL. So, in the IT information library. So, look. We are very process driven, as everyone is, is in service areas. We, when I came in, we weren't really working to ITIL. We're now doing that. So we've got all our major disciplines running to best practice. Um, and you know, the most recent change we've done is our instant flow improvements, and that kind of tied in with the uh, move to the web form and the automation. So you know, again, what we're doing is we're constantly looking to improve, and the, the new flow improvements mean that we have that time at first line, so they will not sit on it for a long period. They will spend a period triaging 15 minutes to half an hour. If they know they can fix it in that time, great. They'll schedule the work to fix it. If they can't see the fix, they pass it to second line. Second line will pick that case up, usually within a matter of hours. You know, Again, they'll spend an hour to an hour and a half looking at it. Can they fix it? No. If they can't fix it, they'll pass it on to third line. So that incident flow improvements and, and handling improvements are something that we're constantly working on. But again, the whole purpose of it is to, to get where those unfortunate, unfortunately issues happen and where they do is to get to resolution as quickly as possible. So look, that's a whirlwind update from me. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, we are going to go into the break shortly. So just before we do that, Caroline, have any questions come through for me, please, as I hand back to you as our host today? Do you know what? They're amazing me. I've never had such a quiet bunch. So um, <laughs> it's short of picking on somebody again. Come on, one and all, have we got any questions for Richard? He's just desperate to, uh, to answer anything that you do have. He does love speaking to our customer base at the best of times. So... Uh, it's uh, it's a disappointment to him that it was uh, a remote rather than a face to face today. So we should at least get him a, a one question or so. Um, in the absence of anything, I've got one for you, and it's around that self serve piece. Um, it, what's the biggest efficiency you think you're finding from that one at the moment within the team itself? I mean, as as I as I said, we we have in essence previously had to have a dedicated resource for for basically logging email. Mm. Um, that resource has been moved into our service desk team, so we haven't we haven't dropped the head by by um, by doing this. In fact, we've increased our our headcount in essence of people that are actually resolving. The main efficiency, though, Caroline, I think, has to be that we see things more quickly. The the, the previous way of, of doing it, where that person handling the email would literally copy and paste the the response from the customer into the case, we didn't necessarily see that straight away. Whereas now, because the notifications are sent to the analyst it's assigned to, you've had a new update on this case that's in your ownership, we see things much more quickly. So that's probably the main efficiency. Brilliant. Uh, thank you. Um, we do have a question from Callum. Uh, hi, Callum. Uh, he's wanting to know how will the online form affect users that have the third party reporting? So an ATOS, a dimension data, any of those in the, in the middle for obviously tickets that are raised in that sense. Yeah, for sure. So um, different partners, we do have different arrangements with. Um, and the majority of our partners do actually allow customers to, to, log, to talk to us directly. So if customers are talking to us directly, whilst the partner may still say, I want to raise the case. So just use Callum as an example. So Callum sends the email to Atos Service Desk. They'll do a quick triage on it. No, we can't fix it. It's a tiger problem. Uh, they pass it to us. We would actually log it in Callum's name. 
So Callum would receive the updates. Um, if Callum in response to that email, it goes onto the case in his name. Uh, so some of our partners, we mentioned DDSA, we, we don't deal directly with the end customers. So updates would go back and forth with, with them as a service provider. But yeah, we, we do have different arrangements in place. And look, if you want to talk to us direct and your partner is kind of doesn't want you to talk to us direct, talk to your partner would be my, my first advice. Um, we're happy to talk direct to customers or via the partner. To us, we'd rather talk to customers direct, if I'm honest, because we get to resolution quicker. Having to, to go back through a service desk in the middle and wait for them to then go back to you as the customer and come back to the service, you know, it adds time, it adds delays. So, um, yeah, talk, talk to your partner if it's not happening that way. But really, Caroline, we, we generally talk to our customers directly. Great. OK, Callum, easy answer is yeah. Both options are open to you and a lot of the time it does depend on the severity and the type of, of analysis that you might want to, to raise with us. But more than happy and yeah, raise it with your account managers as well and we can get the best way, the optimised way of working for your particular requirements. Yeah. Um, look, just, one, just one thing I will add just quickly before we go to break. Um, don't forget, we publish our phone number. It's there for you to use as well. Um, I've talked about the web form, I've talked about email, but we do have a phone number. Um, yeah, 0145 891 000, option two for us at the service test. Yeah, give us a call. You know, if anything's ever really urgent, and it was you mentioned the word severity there, Caroline, if it's really urgent, really so give us a call. We'll log the ticket. We can start looking it straight away for you. Um, equally, if you're not getting updates, if something's not working quite right for you, give us a call. That number's there. We'll talk to you. We'll, we'll figure it out. And that does really warm my heart. Maybe it's the 20 odd years and how telephony and communication has changed over that period of time. But absolutely, we are not a faceless company. We really do love to speak to our customer base. And that's in times of trouble as well as is in those positivity and review meeting status. So 100%, if, if you need to speak to us, please do so. It would be really welcome and it's always a positive outcome. Mm -hmm.